this is Pixie doing another video. I'm going to do a bit more of a meditation video, hopefully. So let's begin, I guess. We have to get ourselves, get yourself, um, get yourself comfortable. Just let the tension start to drop from your shoulders. You may sometimes feel that if you move them and stuff, you can just give it a position of the body. And also lower back. You want to feel that's if it's comfortable to do that then. And also legs and your fingers are all sort of those. And take a deep breath in. Hold it. Squeeze your fists. Squeeze your toes. Breathe out. And as you breathe out, allow the tension to be released that you've tightened your body and do that. Do it again. Breathe in. That's like a death, death breath, that is. <laughs> Pure. Yeah, here we go, Andrew. Let's have a do it again. Breathe in. And then now that's a tension to drop out of your neck. You won't have to do it again because you'll probably feel your body's like be really tense and then so you relaxed it. So you've overcharged it and then you've relaxed it. So now your body feels quite, it should feel quite soft really. And then just feel that kind of connection to the ground. Just feel that surface, so you might be wearing shoes, it doesn't really matter. Your foot's kind of like melting into that ground. You can sense almost the gravity of the ground basically, the force, the form of it, the tension of it. And you also might have a sort of tingling sensation in your feet. It's where your blood's circulating through. And it's sort of almost like electric as well, it's electrical energy. And then the coolness of the ground it has that kind of magnetic resonance. So just allow that to sort of merge. See your feet almost like they're growing into the ground, like roots. Connecting all deeper into that ground. Now allow your mind to, get, to drift the focus further up your legs. Until you can feel your knees, sense your knees. You can sense the shape of your knees in your mind. You can almost cir you can circle um, with your consciousness around your kneecaps and joints. And then your mind, you can see your bones. You can see what your ma legs made out of actually. So this that kind of exercise opens up. Um, for your third eye, you're seeing things, visualising things. And just allow your breaths to become quite deep and relaxed. And it sort of rises up, rises up a bit, your breath, as you breathe down in. And then it has this kind of sinking sensation in your lower back. You might find yourself rocking. Just gently, it's just releasing tension in your spine. So I'd also do some work to open up your heart chakra. Now to open up your heart chakra, it's, it's driven by feelings. So even if you don't feel so great, I want you to focus on a time you did or focus on something. Just that sensation of that feeling, like pride, um, happiness, maybe joy. Maybe you, you got something last Christmas, something that gave you that emotional feeling. Something positive. It sometimes takes a little bit more with the heart because people are used to protecting their hearts. So open them up is a bit more difficult. The minds are normally quite open anyway.
or I could cast a thought that you're a wonderful sentient human being that your life on this planet was given meaning and purpose that you function to a higher, a higher force a higher essence but you're exactly the way you're supposed to be and every day you take a further into the journey of yourself and become become more important important to your own existence it's like a puzzle, there's more pieces being laid and so your self worth is not fully under recognised and understood, but as you get older it will be the journey of life is merely one of many and uh, this gives you a sense of um, freedom in yourself freedom from fear of things like death because you know you'll just return anyway, it's not going to hold you back, it's just going to give you an opportunity to come back to something else but also that you've been given a gift, this, this wonderful gift is something you can't give back and that is, that is life and that is um, self purpose that is your will, that is your desire that is your focus it's what you want to become as well So you're um, you're a legacy in something a bigger picture as well, and this is also a fractal of what you really are. In truth, you're probably having many different experiences elsewhere. The things you touch around you are influenced by you. It's like a ripple effect. So you live in people's memories as well. They, they will reflect back on you. Also, consciousness has been reborn in other things as well. As it has expanded, it's rooted itself in other beings. So I just want you to have that deep sense of self. Just to feel some sense. You might feel a sensation in your heart. If you don't, don't worry. It's um, It sometimes takes... Um, time to build up. There are certain hacks, like if you feel something in your heart that causes an emotional change there, like you're angry, you're happy, you know, extreme an emotion that causes some sensation in your heart. Once you've sensed that, I want you to sort of memorise that, and then sort of be able to re-access that, and that would be your kind of hack me into yourself emotional um, chakra of your heart basically so just want you to breathe just breathe in a relaxed manner make sure you're comfortable and that you've got a sinking sensation into the chair I want you to start to see yourself. We're at, well, we're at the mouth of a woodland. It's known as Everglantia. And this forest can be of your, you know, you can visualise it how you like. of us, it's, um, so we're kind of like standing at a field, but we're at the sort of entrance to this wood, and, and then I want us to sort of start to journey in, as we walk you can hear the um, small twigs snapping under your feet, you notice as you look at the ground the texture of leaves down there, it looks like this place is um, getting closer to more autumn, I've seen reds, reds colours in some of the leaves on the ground. I just want us to walk together. We slowly walk on into this woodland.
so we're going to journey deeper into the woods. And it's, um, it's also quite cool, the woods. There's going to be an embankment coming up. And we're going to go past some bushes as well, and some tight bushes to the side of us. And some have got berries on, but let's ignore the berries, they're not, not something you want to eat. Journeying on through the woods. And you can feel the rustles and the You can hear noises you'd associate with the woods as well. You can hear little birdies. And it's quite a, a safe woods as well, I don't to concern yourself. The lights come up in the trees. It's going to a darker patch, and there's um, this embankment, and then it kind of cuts down into, it's fairly steep, but it goes down, yeah, it, it kind of goes down this kind of, I think it used to be like a bit of a gorge or something, something cut into the ground, and it goes down. Now just ahead of us, there's... There's a little man, basically. He's got, um... He's about... He's about two foot tall. He has reddish curly hair. His head's kind of wider than a human's. And he's a um, fairly small little body. He's wearing a kind of like green cloth clothes he's made. And um, he's got a he's got a hat. Looks like it's been fashioned out of some other, somebody else's clothes. He's cut it out and made it. He also looks like he's got a pipe in his hand as well. And he's also got quite pointed fingernails. So um, don't don't be afraid of him. But be kind of respectful of him as well. That's kind of he has some. Um, potential there. He's more likely a trickster, and these are these beings that have the ability to put blessings and curses on people. They're able to. Um, they're able to travel in time and influence an event. So if somebody said something bad is going to happen to you in nine days' time, on the ninth day, they've influenced something. Or if you've got a curse, it may be something they put in the past. There's, there's you know, so your luck's really bad. Because um, all your money's gone or something, or something's happened. Um, so, yeah, the, the influence of things in the it, events in the past and the, the current... This this being is quite fine. Um, I think his name is. Here. So the name of this being is called um, Grubbar, and um, he's essentially your guide to this area. So he's going to take you, um, take you with. There may be other characters that might join us as well, other beings. And he's um he's like a like a gnome or maybe some of those people call this like like, like a leprechaun, but very much a kind of spirit of the woods. So he may um as a as a, as a feral in. Um, as a kind of clan tribe, I guess, group. There's others of them there. So he's going to lead us down this path, and it's kind of it's quite a steep embankment. 
it's like a little hidden area for them. There's some other creatures as well. They call them uh, mud cats as we're walking down this environment. They keep them as pets, but they, they have the ability to sort of um, camouflage themselves. But they are like cat-like creatures. I've just started to be on the move, so don't worry about any additional noises. And they, well, basically the, the mud, the mud cats, mud cuts, as they sometimes know as well. Um, they they keep um, sort of pests down. They have these pests called um, type of mole rats, and they're more rat than mole. But they tend to. Um, burrow up and, and they tend to steal things and take it back into the underground. So they end up burying things basically. They have a kind of like, um, not just food they're after, they might have a bit like a magpie, they have to watch or something around to come up and take that down. I guess it's minerals they're after, not unusual creatures. So we're going to carry on down this, this um, path. There's like a little cave at the end of it. There are some of these other beings up on ridges and stuff looking at us. And um, our, um, our grubber is, um, if he does talk to you, it may sound like it's slightly garbled, but the, the longer you listen to it, it start to it pick out words that come out of it. And that's because it's kind of like, um, speaking in like a different frequency <laughs> or something. Something like might make a noise like that or things like that, so it, it's just it's kind of muffled. It's like in 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 uh, so yeah, so we go go into this um, cave area, and it's just kind of you receive something spiritual here as well. And so we enter. So it's like the bushes around the side of the mouth. This is a little entrance into something that's underground. So it's like an underground. Uh, maybe it's an old not part of an old mine or something like that. There is some um, there is some sources of light in there. They've got some like um, torches that are on the wall. And in the middle of it, they've got light coming down. There's um, there's also a pool of water as well, because there's fit healing potentially in here. And um, there's a large book that's rested on an altar. And so what you need to do is with a clear heart and mind, um, go to the book. And um, when you hold the book, it will show you an image of what the plant is on it. So you might see something. Um, and it's like the Herbaculus or something, that's what it's called. Um, uh, this actual type of book and um, it connects you to sort of nature of Herbaculus and uh, kind of knowledge as well so if you open the pages you might see that it seems like bright with energy you might see that there's symbols reappearing them you may even see something you can read on it it's going to connect to your psyche it's like a, a download and so when you've got this book, you can take it with you. Uh, but yeah, it's very important to have sort of a, a level of a sincerity and honesty in there. I mean, there are other things in this, this cave that you can't see. I mean, you might see there's, um, there's a mother fairy or something. She's, it looks like a, it's, a, it's a woman. She's quite bright white. She's got a glow about her. And she may, she may ask you to do something. She may... Um, want to consult with you. I mean, if that's that's probably quite high level if you get something like that. I mean, I'm worse she's in there. I'm just not, I'm not even 
engage directly with them. And also it's a place you can come back, but you have to be in the right mindset, you know, if you kind of like want to do something like um, capture one of these mud cat things and or do something nutty, then, then it might back backfire. But it does lead into a further areas of this cave network and it's subterranean, so it's kind of, there are bits of the woods that there was light coming through and the caves are fairly close to the surface. I think it's because it used to be um, like an underground stream that, that burst out and then basically drained out after that. And, and also, you, when you come to this place, it'd be likely that you'll pick up a guide so that you're allowed to go through because you're um, a foreigner basically in this, this area. There we go, so we've got the, um, so if you collected that, you can reflect on it anyway, meditate on it. Um, so what you need to do is come come out of the cave and there's a, our little friend waiting at the uh, mouth of the cave. He's also got some bling on, he's got some uh, <laughs> little rings on his fingers. <laughs> so he's going to take us back up and, and we're going to go back, journey back to the mouth of the woods. Which actually takes a lot shorter than travelling there. And I just want you to breathe. He'd, be, he'd wave us goodbye actually, he'd wave him goodbye, he likes us. And um, he likes humans, so that's good. And um, he thinks we smell funny though. And um, yeah, basically just, just breathe as, no, as normal. Allow your eyes to slowly open, just relax and take it in. And then it, and you'll have a sense of yourself going back. <coughs> and then it's just a case of... Um, returning to yourself, basically. Waking up. And just popping back into your own consciousness, and, and, and uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed that experience. <coughs> it's one of these things that keep popping in my mind, and I thought, well, should I do another video on these sorts of things? And I think it, it's a good thing. When I used to do, I was a part of kind of it was a bit of a cult. There we go. Can get much closer to the curb now. <coughs> do some martial arts. We used to meditate on martial arts, but then we used to meditate on other stuff as well. And it was a bit of kind of like remote viewing and, and other things. I have to wake me up. You don't always have to drink the whole lot of one go. And we just overload to have sugar, with sugar. But yeah, I used to do a bit of a, a cult thing like meditation sessions. Just to go around there, close your eyes, meditate on things, pick things up, learn things, and share it with the group. And that's how that used to work. But we used to look at different um, like locations, like you know, focus on Camelot or other places to gain some sort of spiritual knowledge or healing so yeah anyway that's good so i'll end this video now <laughs> i feel refreshed <laughs> and i uh, will speak to you soon bye